So some of the things that I think are critical, first of all, make sure that you talk with a trusted advisor, whether it's at a credit union or a community bank or a family member, to help you understand if you can afford that home that you're trying to get into. And make sure one tough lesson that people are learning now is that in certain interest rate environments, a variable rate mortgage might look attractive, but gosh, there's a lot of risk associated with that. And you need to make sure that you can afford that home even when that loan reprices at a higher rate, if that's the type of mortgage that you get. So making sure that you can afford the home, uh, some of it's very common sense, making sure that you're talking to a trusted advisor to get the help you need, because there are a lot of documents. It is a complex thing sometimes. And, uh, you know, just those are some of the basics. One of the phrases you often hear these days is that somebody is upside down. On a, what, what does that mean when they wow. that phrase? Well, we are, we are in uncharted waters right now in our country. This housing-led recession is being exacerbated or made worse by the fact that our, our home prices have been bid up dramatically in certain markets like Las Vegas and LA and Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Not so much in Michigan. We didn't benefit from a big spike in home prices. But what is happening in Michigan and elsewhere is that bubble is bursting and home prices are coming down in literally every neighborhood. So being upside down in a mortgage simply means that, again, it goes back to personal responsibility. If you're stretching too far and too hard to get into a home that you can't afford, you're putting a little bit down and the lender's letting you put 5% down, mm -hmm. that's good in some ways. But what we're seeing now is a lot of people have had then their home prices go down by 20% and they now owe more on their home than the home is worth. In, in Michigan, there's been some reduction in prices, maybe not oh, as, sure. as much as in other states, but here too? It, the, the reduction in home prices has mirrored what is happening in other parts of the country but without the increase in home prices that many parts of the country enjoyed. And so, yeah, we have a lot of people right now in virtually every neighborhood, and they know who they are, who uh, when they look at their mortgage balance mm -hmm. relative to the price of that home, uh, they're, they're underwater. And where it becomes particularly problematic is if someone loses their job or has a desire to move somewhere else yeah. and they can't sell their home without bringing money to the table at closing. It's, it's a tough situation. You know, uh, when you were talking earlier, you were talk to, talking about the social mission uh, of uh, credit unions. And, and the, if what we're doing here today is educating people a bit about these things, is, I'm sure fits within that framework. But would you tell us and our viewers a bit about, about credit unions' social mission? I'd love to. Again, credit unions are not-for-profit cooperatives. And what that means is they have a mission to serve and put service ahead of profit. And when it comes to financial transactions, financial mm -hmm. services, that translates oftentimes into uh, lower fees, a little bit better rates, and higher levels of service. And that social mission for credit unions means that they, their purpose is to help their members, especially people of modest means and moderate means, to get a leg up and to borrow uh, wisely and to save for their future. And so most credit unions are not just uh, providing products and services, they're also providing counseling to help people make wise financial decisions. In thinking about, about savings, uh, and uh, in growing up my father used to tell me, well, here's your allowance, you ought to take a certain amount and put it into, into savings. I have to smile as I remember my father talking to me about that. I guess the, uh, uh, as an adult, uh, I used to try and put a certain amount aside uh, out of my, my paycheck. Do, how do we go about this? What do you think the best way mentally to train yourself is? Do you have some, some well, recommendations or tips for us I, to be savers? I do, but again, you know, I would make the analogy to physical fitness. Yeah. Everybody knows that diet and exercise are important and knowing what to do is part of the battle. Uh, the same is true with financial fitness. I think, uh, you know, if you were to test people on uh, the basics of saving and, and smart finance, people would understand that they should put a little bit away early in their lives to save. But conditioning yourself to do it is what it's all about. So I think it starts at home. I think parents need to take this as seriously as they do uh, the other important interests of their children and lead by example 
Talk about the finances with the children. Mm -hmm. Talk about your mistakes. I think one of the best things mm -hmm. that kids can see is the mistakes of the parents and mm -hmm. family members and learn from that mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully not repeat those mistakes. But it's, it's common, common sense, you know, discipline children, encourage them, reward them for saving a little bit of their allowance and a little bit of the money that they earn and uh, heap on a lot of praise to, to help develop those habits early. When I saw those kids at uh, Hanley School uh, yesterday, uh, and we did. We gave them uh, a lot of praise, and they seemed very proud of themselves. They kind of puff it out there, little, little chests of boys and girls, whereas they were making their deposit. I, uh, it was really uh, it was And sure, beautiful. I mean, Senator, you know, a, a typical parent, will, the, a father might get excited, well, not the stereotype here, but a mm -hmm. father might get excited when a son makes a big shot in the basketball game, or uh, mom and dad might praise... Uh, the daughter when she does well in a dance class or does well on the softball field, because I'm not going to stereotype. But do we also as parents uh, try to praise when they work hard and save a little bit of money and show discipline in, their, in some of these basic financial matters and saving for college? It's, uh, it sounds yeah. common sense, but I think that the challenge is if we don't get busy doing this in our families at an early age, in our schools, and in our society for adults as well, uh, saving for retirement. If we don't get busy in that regard, we have some serious economic and financial uh, challenges ahead of us because when society saves, we're saving for a rainy day and we're saving for future prosperity. When we overspend and overborrow, we set ourselves up for some of the problems we're encountering right now. Yeah, I think that's very good. Sad, but true. Hey, by the way, changing subjects a little bit again, what are you looking at as uh, an institution or a group of institutions in uh, legislation in the upcoming year or years uh, here in Lansing that we ought to be talking to? Well, one of the about. important issues that we're talking with lawmakers about right now, credit unions have not been a part of the foreclosure problem that we're facing. We had 125,000 plus foreclosure filings last year in Michigan. We know we have 200,000 plus subprime mortgages. Um, Twenty percent of them are delinquent. About ten percent are already in foreclosure. How does that compare to where we were, say, five years ago, or something? Well, like there's a dramatic spike. You know, just to, uh, 2004, I believe, there was something like 40,000 foreclosure filings. It's up 68 percent from one year ago, and we know that 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 level of foreclosure activity is rising dramatically. So, what do we do about it? We're talking with members of the legislature right now because even though credit unions haven't been a part of that problem. Mm -hmm. They, they have uh, lent money responsibly and they, they haven't been a part of the subprime mortgage lending fiasco. Credit unions are working to try to find solutions. And so we're trying to create a process, a mechanism to help get at some of these folks so that they can refinance those mortgages and get into uh, affordable mortgage loans and be able to stay in their homes. But it's, uh, there is no silver bullet, but we have some ideas and we've been talking with some of your colleagues about that. We were working on some legislation earlier uh, for uh, uh, sort of like uh, continuing education credits and uh, uh, in within uh, the mortgage industry, and uh, those uh, ideas I guess would go towards making sure that the the lending agent, the lender, was uh, properly uh, well, uh, up to up to I guess speed on what's out there. 